to the Adjusted for Risk podcast here from the shores of Lake Tahoe. Today's episode is sponsored by the award-winning Zephyr, which helps advisors, wealth managers, financial analysts, and investment professionals make more informed investment decisions. Since Zephyr's inception some 30 years ago, Zephyr has been recognized as an industry leader in investment analytics. Uh, that status hasn't been built overnight, uh, but rather it's been built on years of thought-provoking uh, content and research, uh, an unparalleled presentation of those analytics that help investment professionals tell their story and not just part of their story, their entire story. And the creation of new analytics, whether that's the Zephyr K ratio or the pain index or the pain ratio uh, that help these same investment professionals tell their entire story. So through a series of Zephyr stat fact videos, I'm gonna go ahead and help you uh, make sense of some of these investment metrics that are used or maybe not used enough today and how to use them. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the Zephyr Stat Facts, which was a creation or the brainchild of former Zephyr colleague, Mark Odo. So I'm going to go ahead and take those uh, fantastic resources, those Zephyr Stat Facts, and put them into a video format. You know, there are a lot of great investment metrics out there. And in some cases, it can be like alphabet soup, which can make it confusing in determining what metrics um, an investment professional should use. So hopefully this series of StatFact podcasts and videos will make it easier for you. In this edition, I'm going to go ahead and focus on the popular return risk trade-off statistic, the information ratio, which measures the trade-off between risk and return. Uh, the information ratio is really it's similar in some aspects to the popular metrics like Sharpe ratio and the Sortino ratio, and that it is a return versus risk metric. But the information ratio differs really in it is a benchmark relative return versus risk uh, metric, whereas um, statistics like the Sharp ratio, Sortino ratio, they do not include um, a benchmark return. So that's where really the two differ. The information ratio, like I said, is a benchmark relative return versus risk metric. Uh, the information ratio measures the excess return against the benchmark divided by tracking error, where uh, tracking error is a measure of consistency. Uh, one of the reasons why I really like the information ratio and find it useful is that it answers two uh, of the most important questions for an active manager. First, uh, did the active manager I'll perform this passive benchmark. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward, right? Um, if you're gonna pay that active management fee, you better hope you um, offset that fee with outperformance. Second, uh, was the manager able to outperform the benchmark consistently? So number one, did it outperform? And number two, was that outperformance consistent? If the answer to either of those uh, questions is no, really then a low cost passive product like a index fund or an ETF might make more sense than paying for an active manager. Therefore, uh, the information ratio stands really as a great way to justify an active manager's existence or an active manager's worth. So, what is a good number, right? That's kind of the million dollar question here. Uh, the higher the information ratio, the better. If the information ratio is less than zero, it means the active manager failed on its first objective of outperforming the benchmark, okay? Of all the performance statistics, the information ratio is one of the most difficult hurdles to clear 
right? Um, number one, you've got to outperform uh, the benchmark, okay? And then generally speaking, the information ratio in the range of 0 0.40 to 0 0.60 is considered really quite good. Um, information ratios of one or um, above one for long periods of time are, are very rare. Typical values for information ratios really vary by asset class. Um, you know, and you can see that when you when you take a look at um, our stat facts that, you know, depending on the asset class, um, that depends on, you know, really where you can capture more or higher information ratios. But you can get zero if your manager underperforms the benchmark. What are the limitations? Um, the information ratio, like I said at the beginning, is a benchmark relative statistic. So it is entirely possible for uh, a manager to have a high information ratio, but still exhibit significant losses if the benchmark was down. You know, and you might see that now in today's market. Benchmark, you know, the S&P 500 is down 18% for the year. Sure, your manager might have beat the benchmark and it might be down only 15%. But, um, you know, you can, so that would provide a high information ratio because you beat the benchmark. But does that say a whole lot because the benchmark was down 18%? Um, sure, you beat it, but you were also down 15%. So whenever you get benchmark relative statistics, your statistic might be high, but you might still experience deep losses because the benchmark did. Um, also, because the information ratio is benchmark relative, it is imperative that the benchmark used in the analysis is appropriate in order for the information ratio to be relevant. Because of that, you must compare like, like managers, apples to apples comparisons. If you're comparing, if you're looking at a large growth manager, you're going to want to make sure the other large growth manager uses the same benchmark, the Russell 1000 growth, in order for it to be relevant. You can't, like, for example, the Sharp ratio or a Sartino ratio, where you can compare apples to oranges. Whenever you're using a benchmark relative statistic, like the information ratio, it's got to be apples to apples using a relevant uh, benchmark for both managers in your comparison. So that ends this edition of um, Zephyr Stat Facts for uh, the Adjusted for Risk podcast. Again, you can watch previous Zephyr Stat Fact episodes on our Adjusted for Risk podcast. Um, you can find that podcast on the Adjusted for Risk YouTube channel as well as on Spotify. Lastly, you can catch more of our content and research at a wealth of insight from 6,237feet.com website. And there you'll also find more information about the information ratio, as well as other Zephyr stat facts that we cover in these podcasts. So with that, I would like to thank you. I hope you all have a great rest of your week and um thank you for joining this edition of adjusted for this